Hello, and welcome to the Bread of Life Church. I'm Pastor Mike Stratton, the senior pastor, and we welcome you tonight. The Bread of Life Church is a non-denominational church in Buffalo, New York, and tonight we have nightly manna. Our nightly Bible study, we have that from Monday through Saturday at 7 p.m., and it's taught by one of the leaders of our church. So, I know it's going to be a blessing for you. Let's go in and hear what the leader has to say. Good evening and welcome to Nightly Manna here at the Bread of Life Church. I'm Pastor D. for Donna and the title of our message today is called Activation. And it will be a study on the Great Commission. So whether you've been a Christian for many years or for just a few short years, this message, this Great Commission is for everyone. So, let us pray. Dear Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, we just thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for the illumination of your word, O oh Lord God. We thank you for everything that you have done, O oh Lord God, for everything that you are doing, Lord God, and everything that you will continue to do, O oh Lord God. Father, is bless this word today, Lord God. Your anointing be upon it, O Lord God. And we bless you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. So, as we're going to be beginning this study today on the Great Commission, I think it's only fair to ask, to begin by asking, what is a commission? So, well, a commission, according to the dictionary, is an instruction, a command, or a duty given to a person or a group of people. So, church, this is what we will be digging into tonight in regards to the Great Commission. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, this Great Commission that we're talking about is not just an, an instruction or a command or a duty given, but an instruction, command, and duty given to us by the Lord Jesus himself while ascending up to the Father in heaven. Amen? Yes, amen. So this is a very powerful commission, okay? No ordinary commission, but an extraordinary commission. Amen? Hallelujah. So we will be beginning our study tonight in Matthew chapter 28. And um, I'll just uh, give you a moment to get there, okay? And uh, while I'm waiting... I would just like to take this time to ask how everyone has been doing. And I hope that the answer is well, I pray. Amen. And I'd also like to just reaffirm our commitment, that being the pastors here, the leaders, and all the staff, um, just to reaffirm to each and every one of you, Okay, that during this most trying time, we love you all and we miss you and are looking forward to being face to face with you again. Okay, soon, right? Soon. Amen. So now let's get into the word. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, we should be at Matthew chapter 28, and we're going to be in verses 18 through 20. And it says this, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, 
I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen and amen. Praise God. So let's just break that down for a minute, okay? I'd like to ask, what was the first thing that Jesus spoke here, starting in verse 18? Well, the first thing that Jesus spoke was that authority has been given to him, right? So just think on that for a second. All authority, okay? Authority being the power or right to give orders, to make decisions, and to enforce obedience. So he is saying that all authority has been given to him, amen? Then the next question that um, I'd like to ask is where? Where does Jesus say uh, um, this authority has been given to him? And he says, it is given to him in heaven and on earth. Amen? In heaven. So in the opening to the Great Commission, Jesus is stating that authority, that power, that right to give orders, to make decisions and enforce obedience has been given to him in heaven, the heavenlies, the place where the Father dwells, amen, and not just in heaven, but also on earth, yes, on earth, so up there and down here, amen, we see his authority established right off the get-go in verse 18, church. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, let's look at verse 19. Okay? Move on to 19. There are three orders given to us in verse 19. In verse 1, go therefore, says, to do what? Make disciples, okay, of all the nations, and then three baptizing, right, them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, go therefore, okay? He's telling us to go therefore. Go where? Go into all the nations. That is into the world, church. All the nations, wherever we're in. We can just walk out our door. That is where the mission field starts, church. As soon as we walk out that door every day, amen, the Great Commission is the Great Mission, amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord, to go, amen, so it's not about the office of an evangelist, but to go and evangelize, we are all called, we may not all be evangelists, but we are all called to evangelize, where, into all the world, Amen. We are all called, church. And then to do what? Make disciples, it says. A disciple, a personal follower of Christ, Jesus. Amen. A personal follower. We go to make disciples that want to follow Jesus and have a personal relationship with him. Amen. As we have chose to do. And it says, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Baptize. That is to administer. To admit, um, and to admit with water, symbolizing the believer's faith, amen, in a crucified, buried, and risen Savior. That's death to sin, okay, buried of the old life, amen, and resurrecting to walk in newness of life in Christ, church, amen. Hallelujah. The Great Commission. Go, amen, make disciples and to baptize. And verse 20 goes on to say, amen, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. It says, teach them to observe all things I have commanded. What is this? I mean, what all things, all these things? Well, doctrines and precepts, everything fundamental and essential to salvation, church, okay? See, Jesus taught many things, 
Amen? Recorded in the Gospels. The new laws of life. The Sermon on the Mount. New commandment of love. Baptism. The Last Supper. Repentance. Laying on of the hands. He taught a lot of things. He says to teach them to observe all things that I have commanded. Amen? So we are to teach and train them up and equip as well. Amen? But um, I like this verse in Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11. And let me read that for you. And that says, And we desire that each of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Amen. Just as Jesus promises and says, Then lo, and I am with you even till the end, that the desire is that each one of us show the same diligence as when we first believed. Amen? Always, even till the end. And that we do not become sluggish, church. Amen? But instead, verse 12 says, Imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Amen? So be diligent, church. We must be diligent to fulfill the assurance of hope until the end. Hallelujah. Be diligent, not sluggish. Amen. We not sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Assurance of hope, church, until the end. Amen. As Jesus had wrote, it is written. In verse 20, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So he will be with us even during that time. So we don't have to do it alone, okay? So he will be with us. We just need to be diligent, amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that is the Great Commission according to the Gospel of Matthew. Now, I'd like to go on and look at the Great Commission according to the Gospel of Luke for a moment. And that will be in Luke chapter 24. All right. So let's go over now to Luke chapter 24. Starting in verse 45 through 49. And it says this. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name and to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are subdued with the power from on high. Amen. So, praise God. Going along the lines of the Great Commission found in Matthew 28. But here he's telling them to wait on the power from on high, okay? The promise of the Father upon them. And what is that promise? What is that power on high church? That's the Holy Spirit, amen? In John 20, in verse 22, Jesus said it like this. He said... And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But he's, I like how he says that. He breathed on them, church. The mighty breath of God breathing on them. To receive the Holy Spirit, church. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to share with you an analogy the Holy Spirit 
gave me once regarding the, the Great Commission to go ye therefore. And now this analogy he gave me, I mean, that's been a Holy Spirit, because I just can't think of things like these, okay? Just not the way my mind um, works. But it showed me, and it had to do with a car, okay? Now the Lord, the Father, was the car, okay? Jesus was the key, and the key in the ignition being turned on was the Holy Spirit. Amen? So he gave me this analogy that just like as a car, you know, if you have a car, okay, and you just have a car and nothing else, that's great. The car, what do you do? What do you look at it? it? It looks great. It's nice. Okay, maybe wonderful. But if you can't do anything with that car or go anywhere with that car, you know, pretty much what good is it? But along with every car church, right, comes the key. When you get a new car, or you purchase a car, or new, used, any kind of car, whatever car it is, with that car always comes the keys with it, right? Amen. You need the cars. Amen. Hallelujah. But still, the same thing. You may have the key to the car, but if you just take that key and put it in ignition, still don't do anything with it. You're not moving, you're not going anywhere, you're just at a standstill. Again, um, what's the purpose, right? Amen. Well, when you have that, those keys and that car, now, and you take that key and you turn that car on, amen, now you are in a position and ready to go somewhere, church. Amen. Well, it was the same thing with the Great Commission to go. We have the Father, we have the Son, Jesus, the Father representing the car, the Son, Jesus being the key, then the key being turned on, being that Holy Spirit, enabling us to be able to go out into all the world, into all the nations as he tells us to go, giving us the power to do that, church. In our own strength and power and might, we cannot do that, church. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And sadly to say, I live most of my life growing up um, in a religious background where I knew the Father, I knew about God, I heard about God all the time, just like in a world, most everyone heard about God, right? I knew about Jesus, I received Jesus at a very young age at that time, in that place I was. And so I had the Father, I knew the Father, I knew Jesus, but I never heard anything about the Holy Spirit. I was never taught about the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, the Holy Spirit, after I was born again, I, I had brought it up to someone I knew from back then, and, and they kind of laughed and giggled about it, and I felt kind of grieved, like, you know, they were mocking the Holy Spirit in a way, and it was so sad that um, they just didn't have the understanding. Like, we read here, in, in John, where Jesus said, that, let me read that again to you, in 20, um, or in Luke, I'm sorry, in Luke 45, and he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures, amen? So, my eyes had not been opened yet to the, to the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit, and I was living a dead, defeated life with um, poor choices and decisions and not understanding to listen to the wisdom, the, the wisdom that the Holy Spirit supplies us with and that the Holy Spirit teaches us, amen, and guides us. I mean, wow. Thank the Lord years later when, um, you know, I um, was born again that my eyes were opened, amen, hallelujah. So, church, as the key to a car um, is turned on to go, let us also take that key, being Jesus, and um, turning on us, representing that car, to activate that Holy Spirit within us, church. Amen? So that we are ready to put it in drive, beloved, 
and be activated and go, amen, and go into the world, church, hallelujah, to be activated, church, activated by the power of the Holy Spirit and the might of the Holy Spirit to go. Now, to me, this revelation analogy from the Holy Spirit was exciting. I was so excited when the Holy Spirit showed this to me and revealed this to me and made it so real to me, as I hope it has also uh, been made to you now as well. But also, I just don't want to leave it there at that. Please allow the Holy Spirit to shed some light about the world for a moment, church, as we are commissioned and commanded to go into, okay? Now, um, in John 17, chapter 17, amen, verses, um, starting in verse 13, it's, uh, Jesus says, but now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. And verse 14 says, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Amen. So you see here, church, as though we have been commissioned into the world, we are not of the world, church. Amen. This is not our home. And also the Lord gave me another verse in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3. I think this is why he had me dressed like this today. I don't know. But here it goes in verse 3. It says, You therefore, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. And verse 4 says, No one entangled in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, other versions say this world, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. So, as a good soldier of the Lord, we must not entangle ourselves in the affairs of the world, so that we may please him who enlists him as a, show, as a soldier, okay? So, we are soldiers in God's army, church, amen? And so, although when I became born again, the Lord did open my eyes to politics, and where I never had any interest or concern or any thought in my mind about it, but he kind of just opened my eyes to, to, to politics and, and that world to see. And I may have favor um, one party you know, over another, but according to this, I believe I'm not to get entangled into it. Amen? Um, and first called, spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And love everybody and anybody, no matter their background, no matter their political view, whether uh, what their race is, what their age is, young or old, um, rich or poor. Amen. No those things. Called as a soldier in Jesus Christ's army. And that, um, so, I'm not to get entangled into this. Why? According to 2 Timothy 2, 23 and 24, if you go and look down there at that, it says, it leads to foolish and ignorant disputes that generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not, say that, repeat that after me, church, must not quarrel, but be gentle to all able to teach and patient. If we get ourselves entangled in all these things uh, mightier than we are and get into quarrels, uh, I mean, um, how are we able to teach anybody anything with um, a quarrelsome spirit and lack of patience? Amen. Nobody's going to listen to us, church. Nobody's going to listen. So, we must not get entangled in these into these things oh lord and, um, praise god hallelujah so now that you know church 
I'm going to say be activated, church. Be activated with the Father, is the car, the Son, Jesus, the key, and the Holy Spirit being turned on. And go, church. Go. Go into all the world. Picking up our cross daily. Hallelujah. And laying down all our burdens and going, church. Hallelujah. So pick up our cross and go. Till next time, church, as always, God love you and bless you. Good night to all and to all a good night. Goodbye.